so we've got our, our second camera that's going to cover that action. Let's uh, create what we call a, a follow camera, um, something to cut to that's going to track with the vehicle. Um, so I can select my vehicle here and use this second camera icon, which is create follow camera. So we'll just go ahead and click that. And what you see happens here is a camera gets generated uh, by default right behind the object that you've selected. So I could put a follow camera on a character, uh, a vehicle, or you know, a chair. Um, so let's go ahead and, and look through that uh, follow camera here in my user list. And you'll see we've got uh, position right behind the back of our, our vehicle. We've got some shameless product promotion here on the license plate. Um, and let's create some sort of shot, uh, maybe an over, over the shoulder on the driver um, as he's driving. So um, I can position this, uh, this follow camera wherever we wish here. Let's just uh, crane down. You see I can actually go through objects. Um, we'll come down into the car here. And let's get the uh, character in the car and we'll, we'll see what that looks like. And we can frame it up from here and determine uh, our nice over the shoulder shot. So let's maybe just crane up a little bit more and uh, tilt down just slightly. And so maybe that's our shot. I want to come down just a little bit here. All right. So you can see now I've got this framed up. And as we hit play, my, uh, via I'm gonna, my camera's going to stay here inside the vehicle. Now with just one quick, simple uh, property change, um, I can actually prevent the camera from rotating a little bit like there, uh, like you saw there. I can even apply different uh, damping levels so it can uh, get a handheld effect or the kind of Blair Witch noisy effect. Um, there's a lot of different uh, camera uh, styles that you can achieve. Um, so now you're going to see this camera is just going to stay uh, in this position, um, locked over the shoulder here. And as we turn around, we're going to stay in that same uh, orientation to the vehicle. So that's uh, another over the shoulder we can cut to. Now let's uh, maybe go back to our master view and uh, set up a couple point of views. Um, and we'll, we'll cut all these on the timeline and show you how you can render this movie out. So let's uh, take our uh, character here. Let's say I want him to look at the, uh, the car door as he's about to get in. Um, so I can just swing around and view the car door, tell him to uh, look at. Now whatever I click on, my character is going to look at. So let's uh, have him look at the car door. I'll go ahead and uh, cut to his point of view uh, so you can see that he is looking at the car door. And we'll just go back and watch this uh, take play out from his point of view. So now you see he starts to look down. Again, we can control how fast that happens or doesn't happen. Um, let's uh, also set up maybe her point of view, um, looking at uh, something as, as they're driving. And then we can uh, cut between all of this. So let's get them going in here. And let's have her maybe look at uh, the house there. And so now she's going to be looking at that. And again, we'll just go and look through her. Um, as she's watching the neighbors as she drives by. So you've got, uh, oh, we're going to her house, I forgot. Um, all right, so we've got all of our, our cameras and our point of view set up. Um, let's go ahead and talk about editing or, or cutting on the fly here on this timeline. Now, I know you guys uh, are working with Final Cut um, and with Avid Express. Certainly, you can render out all of your shots as individual movies and, and edit them together in your Avid or in your uh, Final Cut which uh, I recommend because I'm a big believer in using you know, the right tool for the job. So you can just use Antics as your, your shot generator, uh, produce shots one at a time, and that way you've got your handles, you've got all your extra footage as you would in the real world to, to edit together. Um, you can also add all your audio there, um, or you can add it here. But I'll go ahead and show you how you would do some editing here on the Antics timeline. Um, I can open up my shot line here on the filter. Uh, just like in Final Cut, you can toggle on and off what you want to see uh, in your timeline. So at the bottom now I've got my shot line displayed and you'll see it basically allows me to cut between any of my cameras or point of views that we've set up. Um, so all the characters already have their POVs loaded so you can always cut to those. Um, but let's just go ahead and start off with our, our first camera here that we started off with our establishing shot. And you'll see I can scrub through this here and decide when I want to cut to my second shot. So let's maybe cut to my free camera 01, which is uh, covering uh, her coming up to the car. So we got our nice sim simple little push. Let's cut to free camera 01. And let's now maybe cut to his point of view as he's going to be uh, 
looking at the, the car here in a second. I'm probably going to break the rule here in a second. I, I, I always do. Um, we're going to go ahead and look at his, his POV here, um, getting in the car. And let's go ahead and now cut back to our, our free camera one, which will, again, follow with the camera here. And now we can, as we start to get too far away from the car, let's cut to that follow camera or the car that we have over the shoulder or the camera we have over the shoulder. And you see I can still see this window over here. I could even open up uh, my other cameras and get all of my cameras going. Um, let's open up uh, free camera, the first one as a viewport, which isn't seeing anything at this point. I could go and tell it to target the car or um, pan over and, and watch the action. Um, and we can open up our uh, first camera. Oh, we got all three there. So let's go ahead and uh, right click again and, and find a new shot. Uh, we'll come back to our free camera one. And of course you can rename all these um, and, and, and switch up lenses in between your shots. Um, and you really have all the control there. And then now let's cut back maybe to uh, his point of view as the driver, or the over the shoulder, and then the, uh, the point of view of the, the driver. So you can see really quickly, you know, you can come through this, you can decide when you want to uh, cut to new shots. Let's uh, insert the shot here of her looking over at the uh, uh, house as she drives by. Um, she should start to look over here in a second. Oh no, this is towards the end. So I can even move that um, in the, uh, the track. So if I wanted her, you know, cutting to her POV for her to be looking at that house, when we cut to it here in the timeline, now we'll see we cut to her, uh, her POV and she's looking uh, past the driver here at the house. Um, and she'll continue to look at that for the duration of the take. So what we can now do um, is cut between all these and render this out. So we've already inserted our, our, our shots uh, when we want to cut. And, and now let's quickly look at, at some of our render options. So uh, under preferences, I do have uh, my different resolutions. Uh, like I said, you can output a, a 1080i um, or just down to a, a simple thumbnail that you want to attach. Um, and also, of course, you can put out just single frame images, JPEGs. Um, you've got your, you know, your frames per second rates here um, from, let's see how far we go down, all the way down to uh, one frame per second, obviously, down to uh, 120. So you can even input, I had a customer ask me for 500 frame per second rate because uh, you can do some slow motion. And, uh, you know, he went and actually put that into the, the program here and rendered it out at that frame rate. Um, and again, you can output as a AVI, a QuickTime, um, or your, your storyboard image sequence. Um, and with uh, all of your, your QuickTime options, you've got different compressors, which basically can make it ready for your iPod or your PSP or um, your iPhone or whatever you may, uh, your end media um, of choice. So you've got all those different options there. So let's go ahead and just uh, render this out. And uh, before we do, I, I know we're running uh, short here on, on time, John. Um, just cover a couple more things uh, real quick. Let's talk about lighting. Um, I could actually uh, adjust the lighting in here. Let's go ahead and uh, drop my light into the scene. You see I can uh, bring this up here and actually affect how my uh, vehicle is being lit. And you see that um, as I move the light around. Now, we can go into its properties just like everything. Um, and manipulate that or essentially put on a, a filter or a lens. So let's uh, really sell the fact that it's sunset. Let's find this uh, nice uh, orange hue. We'll add that to the light and we'll hit apply here and you'll see now we've got a nice change in terms of uh, the orange hue being projected from my light. And I can even change um, the attenuation value or how um, bright that light is. Uh, you see we've just now brightened the scene up. Um, or I can localize that light. Um, let's just change some of these values here uh, between 0 and 1. Takes me back to uh, trigonometry here with some uh, constant linear and quadratic equations. Um, these numbers may mean more to someone else in this room, um, but you can play around with those and um, change the lighting values. Now, we're working on making that more user-friendly as well to be able to adjust lighting on dials or sliders, something that's a lot more intuitive than um, playing with some of these values.